Hey everyone, you know, I really felt the need to do another video regarding this whole 923 phenomenon. You know, this infamous number that so many of us are seeing in movies, TV shows, video games, TV commercials, children's programming, what have you. This number is showing up in so many things. And, you know, just like what happened with September 11th and, you know, this 9-11 imagery was put in so many different things. And, you know, so many, so many September 11th came and went and nothing happened. But of course, all of a sudden, on one particular September 11th in 2001, the major thing happened. And that was the World Trade Center coming down. You know, it was a world changing event. So many things, you know, happened from that date. And, you know, obviously it changed the world. So with this whole 923 thing, is it also a date? You know, September 23rd came and went last year, you know, without much fanfare. There wasn't really any world changing things. You know, I contend that spiritually speaking, something was put into motion, you know, with the Pope coming to America, making his unprecedented speeches about climate change, you know, uh, in front of the White House, and then going to uh, the UN uh, uh, summit the next day and also giving a speech again about all this stuff about climate change, about, you know, Muslim immigration and all this kind of stuff. And so definitely unprecedented things were taking place around that time in the week of September 23rd, 2015. But, you know, I would like to present some more information, you know, as a follow-up to, uh, to this whole 923 thing that I believe is very, very pertinent and very timely to what, uh, to the days that we're living in right now, because I don't know about you, but I am still seeing this 923 showing up in TV shows, showing up in movies. Uh, it, it is still showing up. And, you know, the stuff I would like to show you today starts off with this whole Invictus Games. And, you know, again, this number showed up in in a, in a commercial that was done, you know, with Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Prince Harry, and, and the Queen. And, uh, you know, it's something that is quite fascinating. You know, of course, we know this Invictus Games is something that takes place, I guess, every two years. Now, I'm not sure if whether it is something uh, that is only between America and the UK. I'm not sure if the other countries participate. I'm assuming that other countries participate in this. But there's definitely this rivalry or supposed friendly rivalry that they like to put out there between, you know, the U.S. and the U.K. So, you know, let's just get right into all this information. I've got quite a lot to show you. And I think you'll be convinced that 923 is more than just the date. There's definitely a lot more to this number. Okay, and even just showing this, you know, this picture here of Prince Harry unveiling, you know, the unveiling of the games this year, showing, of course, the good old, here you go, Illuminati Pyramid. They like to show right away who they are loyal to. You know, okay, here are the elites and the royals and what have you. They're really showing what they're loyal to. And, you know, as we get into this, you know, I first want to give honorable mention to a man named uh, Jonathan Cleck. He did an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal video regarding, you know, this uh, this particular 35 second commercial that was done, you know, as a promo, I guess, for this 2016 uh, Invictus Games that I believe starts on May the 8th. It's only about six days from now. And uh, he really broke this down excellently. And I would strongly suggest that you watch this video. I will leave a link in the description box about this uh, pertaining to this video. Uh, Mr. Clack has done a phenomenal job in decoding, you know, this particular commercial and many other commercials for that matter. He's done a great job decoding, uh, you know, all these arches of bail that are going on, you know, that are being uh, put up all over the place. Uh, he's done a great job decoding even the dollar bills and the messages that are on the dollar bills, the American dollar bills, all that kind of stuff. So I would highly, highly recommend you check out this video. And again, I will leave the link uh, in the description box uh, for his uh, his video. He's done an excellent job. And I'm just here to really add onto what he has said, because some of the things that he stated, it just really made light bulbs go off in my head. Uh, as to the things that I've been watching and, and taking note of and his video just really helped me to put some things together as well So again, I would encourage you to watch his video But what I'd like to start off with is just showing you know this particular commercial first And then we will talk about the things that I would like to add to what mr. Cleck has already shown Okay, so here's the here's the commercial with uh, Prince William. Uh, sorry Prince Harry the Queen and the Obamas so the individuals who um... We lost here during that thing, running the 180 and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the American man here was incredibly fast. Right? Incredibly it's quite close, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Message? Yeah, from Michelle. It was very yeah. amazing. So, would you like to watch it together? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Prince Harry, remember when you told us to bring it at the Invictus Games? Careful what you wish for. Um. Oh, really? Please. 
okay so that's the commercial all right so you know it's quite fascinating what's happening there now again it was of course only you know only 35 seconds but there's something really interesting that i'd like to show now of course uh jonathan cleck has done a lot of great work decoding this but i would like to add to what he has said and first of all you know we see this whole boom you know going on in the commercial you've got you know barack obama standing there with michelle then the people in the arm the army people standing behind them you know do this whole boom thing okay and then you know you've got prince harry and uh, the queen you know basically basically just repeating the same thing that was said by the Obamas. They didn't really rebuttal it. They just said, oh, really? And then boom. Okay, so is there something more behind this? You know, I guess the average person can think this is just about the rivalry. You know, the boom could just signify that, you know, something is going to happen in the game where the U.S. is going to destroy the U.K. or the U.K. is going to destroy the U.S., what have you. Okay, that's what the average person and even myself would think. Okay, but is there more behind this? Because I would like to take you to some of the images that were shown in this commercial. Okay, so the next image, there you go. This is the image actually of the Obamas. So you've got the image of the of the prince and the queen, and then of course the image uh, taken on the video of uh, the army, you know, guy in the background, you know, doing the boom, and of course this guy with the tongue out. I'll I'll get back to that in a little bit. Okay, so there's just so much in this in this 35 second clip that is uh, that needs to be addressed okay so what i'd like to talk about first is this uh this picture that they show you'll notice that prince harry and uh, the queen are looking at a brochure i guess from the previous games and go figure they just happen to show two runners with two very distinct numbers and i'm sure it's catching your eye already look at this the you the american guy is wearing a 239 okay 923 the uk guy is wearing a 223 okay now it can seem like just normal numbers couldn't they but yet again all of us who have been watching this 923 phenomenon know that some there is very very uh very very evil people in this world and they are behind the scenes in everything okay and they are planting these things they're putting these messages out there these numbers that were put on these two athletes for this particular commercial that involved the queen that involved prince harry that involved barack and michelle obama they are definitely communicating something here even as jonathan fleck mentioned the why you know this these numbers that were put in there were definitely intentional and if you look at let's just look at the 223 we all know if you look at that backwards what is it it is 322 the infamous number of the skull and bones group so right away we can see what is going on here already even even though you know Prince Harry has already shown the Illuminati pyramid at the beginning, you know, unveiling everything. But 322, definitely skull and bones. We know what that is. We know that 322, skull and bones, seems to be the people that are behind many of these false flags. It's about all of the false flags events that are taking place all over the world. You know, the most recent in Brussels, Belgium, Paris, France, 9-11, what have you. The list goes on. Boston bombing, you know, I could go on about all the false flags events that have been taking place. But 322, skull and bones definitely an, uh, uh, showing that who's, you know, basically, you know, running this thing. But what I want to draw your attention to mainly is this, 239. Of course, yet again, 923, 239, what have you. The same three numbers, again, are showing up. Now, again, this is May of 2016. And here, this number is showing up again. So even though September 23rd has come and gone, this number, 923, this infamous number is still in play. So what does it mean? You know, there's something going on here. And the thing that Jonathan Fleck pointed out that just blew my mind is this. 239 just happens to be the number, atomic number, for plutonium. Now, any average Joe knows that plutonium is something that is used to create nuclear bombs. And here it is, plutonium 239, right from Wikipedia, says that it is the primary fissile isotope used for the production of nuclear weapons. Ding, 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 ding. Are any bells going off in you already right now? Are any red flags going off in you right now? You know, when, I, when Jonathan Cleck pointed this out, I was absolutely floored. I had no idea that this number nine, or sorry, 239, which again is 923 as well, the same three numbers, has to do with nuclear weapons. You know, could this be the reason why this number is showing up in so many things, just like 9-11 showed up in so many, you know, so much of uh, media, 
and it's still showing up actually 911 is still showing up in in many things you know this emergency number this 911 but this 239 or 923 whatever you want to call it is still showing up and now i find out and many of you maybe already know this it is the atomic number for plutonium the primary material used in building nuclear weapons very interesting and, you know and as soon as i saw plutonium I right away, you know, because I'm such a movie buff, thought about Back to the Future. Now, we know in Back to the Future that the Doc stole a particular uh, particular piece of material from Libyan terrorists, okay, in the movie. And what is it that he stole? He stole plutonium. And, you know, when he told Marty that he had stolen plutonium, I remember the line. I'm sure many of you remember the line. Marty said, what? Is that you're telling me this, this sucker is nuclear? So there you go. Plutonium is used in nuclear weapons and you know very very interesting you know is this mean that some kind of nuke you know i've heard barack obama on many occasions talk about how he's so worried that a nuke is going to go off in manhattan or in different parts of the u.s or isis has said many times that they're going to do a nuclear you know terrorist attack all over the world all at once so are we being set up are they putting these messages out there is 923 something more than just a date is it have to do with a nuclear bomb you know and you know another thing that caught my eye is the colors for plutonium are black and yellow okay look at the color scheme of this invictus games black and yellow you see black and yellow everywhere look at it there you go look at the jacket prince harry is wearing black and yellow look at all the promos okay black and yellow 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 you cannot get enough black and yellow with this look at this black and yellow everything black and yellow Black and yellow, yellow and black, okay? It is everywhere when it comes to this Invictus Games. They are definitely showing something here. I honestly believe that they are putting this message out there. The fact that 239 happens to be the atomic number for plutonium, which just happens to be the primary material needed for nuclear, uh, nuclear weapons, okay? Which happens to be number 239, which happens to be also the colors, black and yellow, okay which even back to the future showed all right so again very very interesting as to what's going on here and you know another thing i'd like to point out is this you know thing with uh with the queen oh sorry with uh these people in the background which i told you i'd get back to this whole tongue thing you know when they did this boom okay both prince harry and the queen you know actually it was first these guys the obamas and their army people behind them they did this boom and this guy's face changed to this Okay, this, of course, with the tongue hanging out. Right away, that made me think of this. How many of you remember the projection of the goddess of destruction, Kali, projected onto the Empire State Building? Okay, this was done back in August of 2015, right around the time where ISIS apparently had, you know, blown up the, uh, the Temple of Baal in, in Palmyra, Syria where they also executed, you know, apparently some of Assad's sol uh, soldiers over the, some of the Syrian soldiers. Uh, but around that same time, Jay projected Kali on the Empire State Building. Okay, so what does this mean? Now, we know that Kali means that, she, you know, means the goddess of destruction. This is destruction. Now, plutonium and nuclear bombs definitely would cause destruction, wouldn't you say? So you've got the army guy now showing literally Kali's face in his face. You've got them talking about this boom. You've got Prince Harry and the Queen talking about the boom. You've got 239 showing up as plutonium, okay, which they've shown on this 100 meter guy, which they've also shown the 223 backwards 322 for skull and bones. You know, you've got them showing this face of Kali uh, on the army guy. You've got even the Empire State Building was also lit up blood red on April the 19th, you know, just this, just last month, which happened to be the beginning of Beltane, okay, the 13, you know, sacrificial days uh, for the occult, basically, high days that they do sacrifice, blood sacrifice to uh, Baal, okay, on these days. So they said that, oh, it was, you know, because Donald Trump, you know, got, uh, got the, or got, I guess, the primary or won New York City, you know, that time, but they're saying it's about Donald Trump winning, but no. I contend that there's more going on than just this, you know, election, so, which is, like yet again, the whole thing going on with Trump and, you know, the whole battle between the Republicans and the Democrats. It's all just a smokescreen for what's truly going on in the background. Okay, so they lit up the Empire State Building. Not only was Kali projected uh, on August last year, 
now the same same building empire state building is being lit up red on the same date of april 19th the arch of veil that was put up in trafalgar sorry trafalgar square london was also lit up red and guess what on the very same day april 19th this arch of veil was put up uh was erected and it was lit up bright red blood red just like the empire state building on the very exact day april 19th the beginning of their beltane feast of the beast nonsense okay so something big is definitely going on and you know if that wasn't enough for you about this whole plutonium 239 being you know uh the atomic number for plutonium you know 239 or 923 you know it could be signifying a nuclear false flag coming check out this video that c Irvana did another great channel that i would recommend it's from a clip of a show called Fringe, I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And guess what? In the show, they show again the 923 and a bomb that has to be deactivated. I'll play this and just check it out. We'll talk about it right after. Check this out. Your turn. Indeed. 923 Church Street, 47th floor. You better hurry. Mr. Agent Dunham, I need immediately back. 923 Church Street. There's a device on the 47th floor. Nicely done. Good performance. The main character in a series called Fringe is trying to find out the address where a bomb is planted on the 47th story of a building. The address given to her is 923 Church Street, and the main character, named Olivia, moves into action. She decides not to run away from the bomb as her colleagues in the FBI do, but to try to deactivate the bomb. I'm in these streets clear now! Everyone in a four black radius! Pass the moon! Go! Double time! Hey! Where are we? Buildings are about 70% clear. They're undergoing renovations, so not all the floors are occupied. So the device? This one's a real mess. Bomb squad says they can't move it or defuse it. Why? Because they've never seen wiring like this before. Hear the person she is speaking to on the telephone tell her that he has faith in her. So, there you go. You've got, honestly, you know, you can't make this stuff up, honestly, even as Jonathan Cleck says, you just cannot make this stuff up. So, you've got the Invictus Games putting this 239 number on one of the runners, on the American runner, go figure. Okay, the, the British guy is showing the 223 backwards, 322 for skull and bones. You've got the 239 for plutonium. Okay, the atomic number for plutonium on the American runner. Uh, now you've got a show that was actually aired, I think, quite a few years ago called Fringe. And this episode showing this, uh, you know, 923 Church Street. Go figure. So this building is located at 923 Church Street. Okay. And yet again, it's also, she has to go to the 47th floor. Now, 4 and 7, simple addition, is 11. Go figure. 11 is the number for destruction from the Bible and in many, and in the occult as well, they use this number 11 for destruction, okay? And when she goes up, she sees the bomb in the building. And what do they flash on the timer? 329. You can clearly see it there, okay? Another reference to 923, 239, 329, what have you, these same three numbers are showing up. And the funny thing is that this time it's right on the bomb itself, okay? 329 is right on the bomb itself. So, is this 923 that we've been seeing in so many, so many things signifying not only a date, okay, possibly more than a date, maybe not even a date, we've all been led to believe that it's a date because of what happened on September 11, because of 9-11. Something did happen on a particular 9-11 in 2001. But is 9-23 something much more? You know, I, I've always had a, had a theory that 9-23 could signify some, the fifth age beginning in 2016 because the, the year 2016, 2016 adds up to nine and the fifth age is two and three equals five. So I was thinking for so long that possibly because 9-23 came and went in, in 2015, Possibly in 2016, which adds up to 9, the fifth age, which is 2 and 3, is going to begin. 
So I'm wondering whether some major false flag is about to happen. Some nuclear terrorist false flag attack is about to happen somewhere in the U.S., possibly, quite possibly, the Empire State Building. Because why is it that they projected Kali, which is destruction, on the building last August? Why is it that in April of this year, starting on the Feast of Beltane, they you know, lit it up blood red? And then the Arch of Baal was also lit up blood red. So something definitely sinister, I believe, is at hand. OK, and they are showing this, you know, if the if the royal, you know, if the people from the royal elites are showing plutonium, if they're showing, you know, so many things going on, you've got two, three, nine standing for plutonium. You've got the three, two, two showing on these on these guys, uh, you know, outfits. You got the two, three, nine on the American. You've got the three, the two, two, three on the, you know, on the on the British guy. You've got, you know, the Kali face on the army guy. You've got the other army guy going boom. You've got Barack Obama and his wife issuing the threat or basically answering back to the to the Brits. You've got Prince Harry and the Queen doing the whole boom thing. OK, so something big is really about to happen, you know, and I'm going to get back to this whole phone thing as well, because even Jonathan Kleck talked a lot about this phone even and decoded everything that is on here, even showing the 69, the number of the crossing that we all know that the occult, you know, has on the top of the of their, you know, their Masonic archway. But, you know, I've even seen that even, uh, you know, you can see the 11, 11, 11 right here in the top because you've got two bars. You've got a two here and you've got the letter K, you know, that actually is the 11th letter of the alphabet. So this could be, you know, two and two, 22, 11, 11. And then the third 11 right here. Problem, reaction, solution. Something could be something big could be in the works. OK. And just to add, you know, what is going on, I would like to also offer that something big did start, I believe, in September 23rd of 2015. Now, we all know the big media event was the Pope coming to America. But I contend that possibly it was a smokescreen for what was truly going on because I found an article that was actually by uh, Rob Skiba actually did a video on this article, as it did, I believe, M. Lord and God uh, video channel. So I, I would suggest checking their channels out. But they had this article that they showed from a, a site called What Does It Mean? And again, I'm not sure how credible this source is, but there are some really interesting things going on here because in December, they put an article out saying, Russia begins transport of Saudi Arabia's mysterious Ark of Gabriel to Antarctica. Okay, so something really interesting is going on here. Okay, so the mind-boggling report circulating in the Kremlin, I know prepared today by the Minister of Defense, states that the sudden launching yesterday by aerospace forces of two satellites for the protection of the Federal Federation Naval Research Vessel, okay, Admiral Vladiminsky, which has just departed to the South, uh, sorry, the Saudi Arabian port of Jeddah, he's departed for that place, Okay, after taking on board a mysterious object described as the Ark of Gabriel. Okay, now apparently according to the story that they're saying, this Ark of Gabriel was apparently unearthed. It was found somewhere inside of Mecca, okay, on that holy ground for the, for the Muslims. But this is what I find really interesting, okay. This happened. Now, many of you might recall that uh, something, you know, catastrophic happened at Mecca, you know, last year in go figure September. Okay, this is what I'm pointing getting to here is that they claim that a crane accident killed a lot of people. Okay, but according to this article, something much more was actually going on. And what they said is that this device or weapon that was apparently found by, you know, excavators was discovered on September 12th, 2015. Now September 12th, September 13th is was the feast of trumpets. OK, Rosh Hashanah. Many of us are wondering whether something big was going to happen on Rosh Hashanah. Well, this thing, this device was unearthed on Rosh Hashanah. OK, and it killed 107 people. OK, now they said that a crane toppled killing people, but it said it killed another hundred and actually killed 107 people. Apparently there was a plasma. Here you go. A massive plasma emission was so powerful that it ejected from the ground. OK, toppling the crane. So that was so the, the crane toppling was only part of the story. Again, if this is even correct. And, you know, it killed 107 people. But what's even more interesting that another attempt was made on September 24th. OK, so September 23rd, 24th was the Day of Atonement, the big day that all of us were looking to for something to happen. So I contend 
could it, it, it is quite possible that the Pope coming to America was the smokescreen for what was truly going on because apparently Kirill, as we know, the Russian patriarch Kirill, okay, met with the Pope, you know, unprecedentedly, not that long ago. He took the thing down to Antarctica, okay. Actually, before I get into that, what's even interesting is they're saying that these people died by a crane. Where are all the blood marks? You know, if these people were crushed by a crane, how come there's no blood on their outfits? They're just lying there. It seems much more believable if this is a, a true picture that, you know, this was an, a plasma emission that came out of this thing and killed these people. Because, again, there's no blood marks anywhere on these people. They actually say that these people were trampled by a stampede. But, again, where are the blood marks? Where is even the dirt marks from people's shoes or feet or what have you? I'm assuming they don't wear any shoes in their, you know, their most holiest place. So where are the, you know, foot marks? Where is the dirt? Where is the blood from these people being trampled to death? I don't see it. Okay, and you know what's even more interesting? It says here that that uh, his his holiness, uh, sorry, holiness, Patriarch Kirill, was then contacted by the Grand Mosque. Okay, so why is the Grand Mosque a Muslim? You know, the Muslim people contacting the Catholics? That makes no sense. Okay, but anyway, they're saying that you know they, they apparently the Russian Orthodox people apparently pr uh, protected. Uh, some documents from the Roman Catholic Crusaders. So uh, it was apparently instructions, Gabriel's instructions to Muhammad about this supposed Ark of Gabriel. Okay, now remember, again, this is all taking place around the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement last year, September 23rd, sorry, September 13th, and September 23rd, 24th, 2015, the days that we were all looking forward to. And, you know, supposedly to us, nothing happened. Okay, but again, then Russia's again an, an article was put on put out on February eighth from oh sorry eighteenth from the same the same place. What does it mean? You know that uh, uh, Russia's top leaders had to perform an ancient ritual in Antarctica over this Ark of Gabriel. So this patriarch Kirill, after meeting with uh, the Pope with Pope Francis, uh, it is speculated that he was given a secret text. Okay, from Pope Francis. Okay, that he went then down to Antarctica. And you know, basically uh, taken by the Russian army. Okay, so he was you know escorted by the Russian army, the Russian Federation army, down to Antarctica to take this thing, this Ark of Gabriel, down there where he performed some kind of ritual. Okay, because again, of what happened on the Day of Atonement, what happened between the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. Okay, the, again, the same dates, the very dates that we were all looking to, that something big was going to happen. So I'm contending that something. Uh, or oh, sorry, the Pope's visit to America was nothing but a smokescreen for what was truly going on. Has something been put into motion from last year, from the Feast of Trumpets, September 13th, going into the Day of Atonement, September 23rd? If this Ark of Gabriel is real, and there was a major plasma discharge that was, you know, emitted from this thing and killed, you know, thousands of people. Apparently, you know, like it said, 107 people were killed on the Feast, on the feast of Trumpets. But then another 4,000, an estimated 4,000 more people were killed on the Day of Atonement. Okay, September 23rd, 24th. 4,000 more people were killed. Okay, so something is definitely going on. If this article is true, if this is a credible source, something definitely did start. Something was definitely put into motion from September, uh, from last September 2015. Okay, because, you know, I contend that something big is coming. And I said I was going to get back to this whole phone thing of Prince Harry. Now, he showed there's a whole bunch of numbers on here. And, you know, I said that this 11, 11, 11 is possibly being shown on this phone and is possibly being communicated to all of us because, you know, I think a big false flag is about to come. I think that. You know, this uh, problem, reaction, solution, the whole Hegelian dialectic is being shown now right in this commercial. The problem, the first 11, okay, which is, you know, could be possibly a nuke. If 239, which we know now, it's a fact that 239 is the atomic number for plutonium, which we know is the primary material used in building nuclear weapons. And they have put this number on the American athlete, signifying that possibly a nuke is going to go off in the U.S., Possibly on in the Empire State Building. We saw that video that Sirvana showed uh, from the Fringe show that there was a bomb in a particular building. Could that building be signifying the Empire State Building? Could it be that they are hiding a bomb in the Empire State Building? The fact that they lit it up red as well is something quite interesting. But Kali, you know, the goddess of destruction being projected onto this building, could it be? that there is something much bigger going on here you know this like the 239 there you go again on the build on the bomb okay they had to go to 923 church street 
to some particular big skyscraper building where this nuclear bomb, again showing the 923 or 329, whatever you want to call it, the same number is being shown there. Okay, so is the problem reaction solution coming? The 11, the big one, the 11, 11, 11, where the problem occurs with the nuke going off, possibly not just on the Empire, not just in the Empire State Building, but many, possibly in many other places. I'm thinking that the Empire State Building could be the beginning of so many other things. Then the reaction will be the outcry of the people of the general public. It'll be panic and chaos and what have you. And of course, the solution, what will the solution be? I believe it's going to be the new world order. It's going to be the police state. It's going to be martial law. It's going to be just a whole bunch of chaos and pandemonium. And the solution, the bright, grand, grand solution, the grand work will be to bring in their new world order. Just as their saying goes, ordo ab chaos. Order, or, sorry, order out of chaos. I believe this is what is being shown. This is what is coming. And, you know, this is the time to be in Christ, you know, and I want to show just a quick clip, you know, from the, the final scene of Back to the Future. You know, we spoke of Back to the Future earlier on, but I want to show a quick clip of this movie. You know, there's a line that has stuck with me that the doc said at the end of this movie when Marty asked him a particular question and he says something very interesting. Just take a listen to this. Did you hear that? Marty asked him, hey, Doc, are you going back to the future? And Doc said, no, he's already been there. Now, we know that the year that the Doc went into the future was 2015. Okay. So now he's saying that he's already been there. Now, you would think that, you know, he would want to go way more into the future. Why doesn't he want to go into 2016? Why doesn't he want to go into 2020? Why doesn't he want to go into anything past 2015 because he's saying that he's already been there but if the future can go for on and on and on why wouldn't he want to go say even to the year 3000 okay he's saying he's already been there so what really hit me and really struck me is that possibly this is a cryptic message to say that 2015 is possibly or was possibly the last normal year you know in the world and that 2016 a big change is going to come you know, that's what I get out of this, you know, particular cryptic line in Back to the Future. You know, we all know there's been so much of symbolism, excuse me, for 9-11 in this movie. There's been so much of other symbolism shown in this movie. So many cryptic messages being displayed, you know, in this movie. And now this one of the final lines of the movie is the doc saying that he's already been to the future. And, you know, why does he want to go into any other years in the future? Because if the future is, you know, if there's much, if there's more past 2015, you would think he'd want to go past 2015 wouldn't you i know i know i would but he is claiming he's already been there so i contend that possibly something big is coming this year in 2016 could be the reason why the doc said in the movie that he's you know already been to the future so you know possibly some world changing event the 11 11 11 you know the problem reaction solution the big nuke that may go off in you know the empire state building as shown in this video as shown, you know, in the 239, that is, you know, plutonium, the number for plutonium, as shown, you know, in this video, you know, with Prince Harry and the Queen and Barack Obama, you've got them doing the whole boom thing. You've got, you know, the face of Kali basically on the soldier. You've got the, you know, Obamas and the, and the army going boom. You've got the 100 meter guys with the 239 number for plutonium on one of them. You've got the 223 reverse 322 skull and bones on another one. You've got plutonium being, you know, the 239 again. You've got the colors from plutonium also being shown in this Invictus Games, the black and the yellow. Okay, you've got Kali being, in, you know, being put onto the Empire State Building, projected up last October. Then it was project then it was turned into red on April the 19th, the Feast of the Beast, you know, Beltane. So is something big about to happen, you know, and I would like to bring it all back to Scripture with Daniel 7. You know, in Daniel, he has a vision of the four beasts, which talked about, you know, basically the four kingdoms, you know, especially the final kingdom that was going to come. And, you know, and Daniel sees something about the final kingdom. And he says, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall arise after them. 
and he shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saint shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half time. And it goes on to say, you know, many more things. But, you know, we can see that it seems very clear to me that the big problem reaction solution is coming in order for the elites, the corrupt people of this that are running this world to bring in their final great work, the new world order, so that the final world leader, the final antichrist, the resurrection of Nimrod, the beast, is going to come. Could it be that this possible uh, a nuke being telegraphed, as Jonathan Kleck says, by Obama now, by Michelle Obama, by the Queen, by Prince Harry. Top figures in the world are now telegraphing. You know, there's been so many hints in, in movies and commercials, but now you've got top people in the world giving out cryptic messages about this possible coming destruction and then using possibly a nuke to start their new world order. Okay, because it, again, as this prophecy says, that the fourth kingdom is going to trample and break the whole world in pieces. It is going to devour the whole world. Okay, and this whole supposed, you know, false flag war on terror nonsense that's been going on, it has definitely been a part, you know, it has been de definitely devouring parts of the world, but they are going to escalate that, I believe. And a big false flag, you know, I believe 923 is definitely not just a date where something was possibly put into motion last year, but. It is going to be, it is signifying, I believe, a major false flag event that is coming, possibly nuclear. I mean, it's interesting that 923 slash 239 is the same number for plutonium. Again, the same number or the same material used in building a nuclear bomb. Okay, the, the goddess Kali, the goddess of destruction being projected onto the, onto the Empire State Building. Uh, possibly something taking place in Mecca last year around the Feast of Trumpets, September 13th to the Day of Atonement, September 23rd, 24th. So something big is definitely about to happen. Then you've got, of course, good old the cryptic Back to the Future movie talking about, you know, how he didn't want to, how he's already been to the future. He didn't need to go, you know, anywhere else. So, you know, is there something big coming past 2015, possibly this year, 2016? I pray that all of us are in Christ because this is the time to know Jesus as your personal Savior. I believe something big is about to happen. I'm not about to set dates or tell you exactly when it's going to happen because none of us know. You know, I am all, you know, I'm like you trying to, you know, uh, get this information out to as many people as possible to help all of us. You know, I'm just trying to pitch into great work like Jonathan Cleck and others who are doing great work, you know, trying to, you know, show people the signs of something big that is about to come. And, you know, we're all just trying to help each other and look out for each other's backs, you know, whether you believe in Jesus or not. You know, there are a lot of, you know, secular guys or people out there on YouTube that are also, you know, great truthers, and I'm learning a lot from them as well. But I pray that all of us, you know, give our lives to Jesus Christ, because he is the only person that can save us from this insane world, you know, from these insane things that are about to begin. And I pray that all of you, you know, who are listening to this, Give your life to Christ. You just never know that you could be here today and gone tomorrow, as the Bible says. You never know if this could be your last day on earth. You never know when uh, a horrible situation is going gonna, is gonna to come. And I'm not trying to spread fear. I'm just being real in that we never know what could happen in a day. A day can bring many things. And I just pray that all of us out there will, will surrender our lives to Jesus and so that we are ready, so that we can be assured that we will go to heaven and be with the Father, to be with our Heavenly Father. When, you know, when something, when the, when the big thing happens, may we be ready. And I pray that we will all be ready. God bless you.